located a tourist map of the city. She was told that, still in trance, she would be able to see and read the map clearly and point out to us exactly where her family's house and shop had stood. Once you're deep enough to stay in trance, I want you just to open your eyes and look at the map and tell me where you live. Step, throwing, throwing who square, throwing who hot, for school, for the shop. wake you up, you're going to remember that map very clearly. Everything you showed me, you'll remember very clearly. Where you lived on the map, you'll remember very clearly. you remember it awake as well as you do asleep. Once I wake you up, I want you to show me on the map where it was that you lived. Waking up, one. Waking up, two. Three. How do you feel? All right? Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. OK, show me on the map. You can't see it because you haven't got your glasses on. Wait, just hang on a second, we'll get your glasses. Where's the glasses? Mm -hmm, over there. when you look at the map? Mm -hmm. Could you see it clearly? Mm -hmm. Right, you could. Under trance, you could see it clearly without your glasses. When we woke you up, we had to give you the glasses. Oh, oh stupid eyes work after all. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hello, Mr. Weeks later, in Dusseldorf, John Abbott joined us as our independent witness. He's a level-headed Australian writer and researcher now studying law in London. Jenny, in a strange city in a foreign land, led us without hesitation. She was taking us to find her childhood home. That's not it. Can I go to the next one along? Yes. Her father had been a jeweller, and Jenny had been very close to him. And now, in modern Dusseldorf, she nearly ran to re-establish that old and loving tie. She took us almost without hesitation, not to Karlstrasse, the street name she'd used, but to Kirchfeldstrasse. But the square's not there. It's all changed. Most surely it had changed. of World War II had bitten deeply into Dusseldorf. When the scars had healed, the body of the city carried a different shape. Two-thirds of it had been ravaged and rebuilt. But in Jenny's mind, Dorothy Hummond felt she was where she had lived as a teenager when the terror struck her family. Yes, yes, that was where the shop was. Street path in there. 
they wore houses, and that went round into a circle. The circle may once have been there, but nothing else matched. Not even the recollections of an old neighbor who'd lived there for half a century and remembered no Hellmans in that street. The following day saw the search for the hospital of which Jenny had spoken, in trance and on the spot. Yes. All right, which way? In here. Ah, uh, in that way, that direction. Right. In there. That's it, that's the park. The hospital's behind it. It's short on this side and it goes long down that side. The, the main part of the was on the uh, this right hand face. Hmm. These were all here, these trees. Yes, they're all there. This is a, where the hospital was. The main entrance was just about here. And all these trees were here. This was all park. The main, the main door was about here. And it had a big, big, heavy lintel on the top. And the doorways were round. They went round, but they were all fluted. They weren't straight. And it went in to, to big doors on the inside. Her description was detailed, but these were apartment blocks and post-war. She was positive that the hospital was not near a railway line, that there'd been a park there. Had the place been so badly bombed that it was pulled down? We went to a pre-war map of the city to check its position. And she pointed up this street and said, right, that's where the park is and, that's, uh, and the hospital is just behind the park. We came to the end of the street because there wasn't a park. There's a railway underpass there, which was a bit disturbing. We went underneath the railway and along this street here, Farberstrasse, which looks like a much bigger street in this 1937 map. This is where she said the hospital was, in this area here. Uh, big, big place, big buildings, and a gate here somewhere, uh, lots of fields. Right, so the, uh, the real problem seems to be that, that uh, this, this railway just cuts right through where it oughtn't to be, but it's definitely there in 1937. Uh, and about the only thing I could suggest is that what, would, uh, what would happen if you took it on into this area, the hospital area, and put it on the ground and see what happens then. And that's what we did that afternoon. This time, we led Jenny to the place where that 1937 map showed there had been a hospital. And there was still hesitation, still some doubt. The big door with the decorated stone lintel didn't seem to be there. The door wasn't on a, on a corner like that. It was on a... There it is. Was that a door? Could have been. The uh, stone was all these blocks. And the doorway had a big, heavy top part to it. And it had the foot uh, bits all down the side. Right. You weren't too far wrong. There have been some changes. Let's see if you can get anything out of that. Oh, yes, there. There's the door. That's, that's the main entrance. Okay. I didn't believe this. it was there. I thought it was all wrong. Not knowing the changes the years had brought, she had described the doorway exactly. John Abbott had to go back to London, but before he left us, he summed up his impressions. But uh, uh, in every way that I've, I've seen it, you know, there's no possibility that there could have been any fiddle-faddle. And uh, all I can really say on that area is if there had been fiddle-faddle, we'd have done a bit better than we did. <laughs> uh, started off very well. We uh, moved from the hotel we were staying in in Pioneerstrasse. She led us uh, as if on strings pretty well directly at a great pace to the uh, to the uh, Feld, uh, uh, Kirschfeldstrasse and straight to a house and said, that's the house, that's our house. Well, who knows, when we set off to, to check all this out, uh, we'd found a, an 89-year-old lady who lived in the house next door, which was an original house. Uh, she'd lived all her life there. Her daughter would have been born there, would have been uh, 10 years old at the time that you were there. No memories of uh, 